Hi, welcome to the United by FOSS podcast. Uh, my name is Venkatesh Hariharan and I am the Public Policy Director for FOSS United. We are a non-profit organization that aims to grow the free and open source software community in India. In this podcast, we will explore various aspects of FOSS. In today's podcast, we are exploring the all-important uh, aspect of careers and uh, jobs and uh, you know students and how they can build a career using uh, FOSS. Uh, today's guest is Anil Golecha, who is the CTO and the co-founder of an organization called Calvium, which is uh, bringing in a new method of undergraduate training. Uh, they call it liberal engineering. So welcome to the podcast, Anil, and uh, you know, thanks for joining us. Uh, I was very curious to understand uh, why you call your uh, program liberal engineering I also wanted to understand uh, you worked with companies like HackerRank, you worked with companies like Google. So what made you leave all that and uh, you know start a company like Calvium? So can we start with your personal journey and then come to what Calvium does, what is liberal engineering? Sure, uh, thank you for inviting me, very happy to be here. Uh, a very short brief on the journey, I started off at a startup called Nexenta. And I got that opportunity because of my work on open source. So in the third year of my undergraduate program, uh, I got involved with a local user group, the Bangalore Open Solaris user group, mm. sister group of, or not exactly sister group, but at the same time as uh, various Linux user groups were popular as well. So, so Solaris dates you. Which the, year was that? This was 2006. Okay. Right? Yeah. Back then, uh, op Open Solaris, Sun Microsystems was still its own independent yeah. company. Open Solaris has uh, become an open source operating system, open source by Sun. Yeah. Uh, today, things that we take for granted, things like Docker, uh, ZFS, ZFS yeah. has now come to Linux. But all of those things uh, in Solaris were there in 2006. Mm. There's something called zones, which is roughly equivalent of Docker. In fact, yeah. in many ways, you know, some more features as well. Uh, ZFS, uh, I don't think in the past 20 years or whatever, 16 years, ButterFS and few other have come. But it's pretty much, I think, any storage-related large systems that are being built out are using ZFS. Mm. So all of these systems had come out. It was a very vibrant uh, but small uh, community. Mm. So I started contributing there. My very small uh, claim to fame there was I had done some work on enabling uh, Open Solaris to boot from a USB. It supported mm. booting from a CD. The change to allow it to boot from a USB. That was a project I mm. did. Uh, that's how I got introduced. From this came, I, I went and presented in some of the Open Solaris conferences and so forth. And I met my future first employer, Next Center, which was in the same space. So, you know, the open source, my free and open source work then provided that opportunity. I was there for a few years and I, I started my career working remotely for three years, uh, which was good and bad good because I didn't know the limits and now when I think back, I did a lot of things just by not knowing I, I shouldn't even be trying some things, but I tried and succeeded. Bad in many ways also because uh, less guidance from more senior folks and essentially burnt myself out. Uh, in some sense. So then I took a very small break and then uh, I joined Hacker Rank again when it was a very early company. Uh, there I worked on the enterprise side of things. So yeah. We were a very small team, uh, sometimes up to just two people and we built out that whole. You were with Hacker Rank for almost about seven years. Yes, seven yeah. years. Mm -hmm. uh, by the, at that time it had grown into you know the brand name that it is today. Uh, and we were at the edge of uh, essentially validating skills in a real way yeah. as opposed to okay don't rely on cgp or which university what if given an engineer and a few one or two hours of an engineer's time can you put uh, some objective sense of their skills whether it be in coding only or okay how good is someone in react or on the some specific backend technology so i worked on a lot of those things and uh, you know we built teams to work on that so that gave a, so as part of that journey uh, were some of the seeds of what's helping in Calvium, which is, it's so broken how uh, companies hire. They use various proxies like uh, CGPA yeah. or ranking, things like that. And I think it is only because uh, it is, there's nothing else to really look at. 
anyway we will come to that so mm-hmm. that was a journey which you know taught me a lot about this industry and what should be ideal and where we currently were and all of the people that customers that we spoke with at that time had the same complaint him and not this so such a huge pool of people coming yeah. but the actual people uh, who have the skills is very small minus q yeah. number uh, so after uh, that's when by the time that i left uh, hacker and around the time of the pandemic just after the pandemic uh, that is the only part where i joined a established company it was google as an opportunity and i was in the workspace uh, team hmm. there i saw the very other side of it which is a whole bunch of systems in place hacker and was more startup in the initial places proper you know full fledged startup over the course of 7 years the uh, lots of you know the right good practices came mm-hmm. in and a very good culture uh, google also had an excellent culture i think it's known for it you uh, and i have a common employee ex former employer former i employer. also was a former i am a former googler correct yeah. uh, a lot of that reputation is very well learned especially the focus put on people and how how things work how you work with each other how do you take on problems how do you solve it even for all the criticism that is given you know on whatever uh, is very publicly known about google but internally there is a culture of taking it seriously and uh, i saw that people cared hey how can we do what's best maybe there is ups and downs in how much is cared but i saw that side of it but one thing uh, is okay a good culture and the, the 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 impact you can have is what i observed it was very slow compared to the pace i was used to in hacker and corn center but in that slow time uh, you know for example you could be working on a project that increased the revenue by a billion dollars yeah and at the you know at hacker and we were happy when we got the 100k to 500k yeah uh, contract things like that so massive change so uh, after that is where i met my current co-founders of uh, calvium and uh, this so uh, as part of this journey having been through with startups i had built an ambition of okay this feels more than just a job when you have you are having an impact on the real world it gave rise slowly to that ambition of you know what what is my impact going to be that was my personal reason for wanting to start up i think very early on in my career uh, that was a uh, how i saw my future and i guess waiting for the right opportunity there were one or two false starts where i tried thinking of things or attempting but they didn't work out this time things came into play i met my co-founders who have been working with each other for 15 years or so it's a very rare case where a, a team forms where someone new also joins in, so mm. to speak uh and it aligned so well uh, i brought a very good set of complementary skills uh, it felt right in that you know idealism also was meeting pragmatism which is it's yes it's a startup it's a chance to go have a big impact in a meaningful place yeah. and then meaningful where is the idealism also comes in so what was the problem statement that you yeah. were looking to attack yeah so the problem statement was how the education system is uh, as it's implemented okay. significantly broken numbers were like uh, roughly right now 8 lakh computer science uh, engineers Or graduating, or graduating or high school students, secondary high school students, are joining computer science related courses. Yeah. Every year, roughly twenty five thousand people join as software developers into various companies. If you look at that ratio, it is terrible, right? Twenty five thousand out of roughly seven eight lakh people, yeah. uh, which is uh, and for all the talk of. Uh, you know education being a wider thing beyond just say a placement or working in the real world from a, if you talk to 100 students hey what is it that you are doing your higher education a typical bachelor's degree for hey i want a good i want to settle well in life right yeah. i want that good outcome which is typically you join a company work there and when you choose computer science specifically you are seeking to become a software engineer or yeah. a role like that but uh, the, it, that is not what is being provided Twenty-five thousand out of eight lakh. Yeah. So this was a the problem statement. How do we even if we two x or three x that number? It's a significant dent, yeah. and it felt right even from the perspective of it's a very meaningful thing. If you can even you know as a commercial venture it may go up or down, whatever. Yeah. 
but 10 years from now if you can say i had an impact where or we had an impact where we were able to very positively affect the education journey of a large set of people you know what's what's not to go for yeah. so very good ambitious problem statement uh, let's go jump into it so that i think it. also on the flip side from the company's perspective uh, many of these companies the large it services companies have huge you know f- uh, offices or training centers where they hire this batch of freshers train them up for a few months at their own expense uh, paying them a salary you know putting them through rigorous training programs etc so i think you're solving problems at both sides for the students as well as the employers but we'll come to that you know so uh, my other part of the question which i started with was why do you call it liberal engineering okay. what is the logic behind that so in uh, theory uh, education system the way it's supposed to work is uh, your first years say up to 10th typically or even yeah. to 12 is a very wide wide knowledge right you do math sciences social sciences yeah. electives and so forth you build broad knowledge about the world yeah. all across 11 12 is it starts getting a bit narrower right you pick commerce as a stream arts as a stream science science, science as a stream your higher education becomes even narrower you're picking a field going really deeper into it and typically you exit into the real world after that so that is how it's supposed to be built up uh theoretically it is supposed to have even amount of say the humanities which is you know in in our up to k10 k12 it will be physics sorry the social sciences yeah. right history civics geography uh you should have roughly physics chemistry biology as sciences math and so forth but because of how it is played out practically the sciences get way significant more weight you know math mm-hmm. and pcm physics chemistry maths biology yeah, yeah math uh or even biology for the medical aspects no because of these aspirations that end up coming and how competitive that you know bachelor's education is a uh, significant amount of weight on the sciences starting from high school secondary high school be little focus on humanities and a well rounded person on the other side when people exit into the real world lot of knowledge or uh, almost bookish knowledge on sciences very little on just general soft skills hmm. the things that humanity is setting you up for a well rounded person who will integrate well as yeah. an adult so we and then the way it shows up is uh, again from my experience speaking to so many uh, companies and hiring managers is okay we find soft students for actually solid in coding freshers zero soft skills don't even know how to raise something absolutely how to, how to uh, if they are stuck right Three days they have been stuck. They didn't even think about just coming and telling me I'm stuck because they're scared. Hey, will I be? I don't know. Will it affect me negatively if I tell someone I don't know something? Yeah. Starting from that to just even communication, right? Uh, as much as we are an English medium system of education, practically speaking, everyone speaks typically in their native tongue up to K12. Yeah. Very few places or even schools where it is more English focused. So, but. Um, much of the real world especially in india is uh, english speaking professional world yeah. so that is another big gap where someone may be a good communicator generally perhaps but their english is significantly lacking and it takes a year or so or two years sometimes for them to yeah. ramp up enough so all of this to say that in the practical implementation of the education system the humanities are short uh, Uh, given a short very, yeah, yeah exactly mm. very less focus than mm. they deserve to be so if you're going to correct that you know that uh, pendulum back towards the ideal what we said is social sciences are significant sorry the sciences have received significant as- attention yeah. so in an engineering program that we built we need to bring back a lot more of the humanities so mm. we we set up people for that good success that they deserve in the real world and hence the way to do it is let's pick the best of the humanities liberal arts for example courses like critical thinking learning how to learn philosophy or rural polity and social sciences mm-hmm. and let's uh, put that in the curriculum and make students understand all of this so that they go out with uh, some breadth of knowledge on these aspects so we specifically designed our computer science curriculum not not just for the placements or the good outcomes which we get it is more about when uh, 
my co-founders and I, we talk about when the student is 30 years old, roughly eight, nine years after they have exited, yeah. have we set them up for the best uh, outcome for them, life outcomes for them, mm-hmm. which will be professional combined with also how well they have evolved as a person. To do that, this is the thing we need to do in the four-year bachelor's course mm-hmm. and hence liberal engineering. So, so one of the comments which I saw on your website is that some of these students who are part of this group uh, of, of the Calvium batch, uh, they have said that they are very happy that they don't have to do physics, chemistry, maths. Uh, so when I talk about Calvium to people in the industry, one of the immediate concerns that they come up with is, but then you know you need the fundamentals of physics, chemistry, maths and to you know have a good computer science student. So what is your response to it? And, you know, I also want you to talk a little bit about the liberal arts. Uh, this what, what what is it from an outcome perspective uh, that it enables or empowers the students with when they come out of the school? Right. So whenever we I uh, first time talk about Calvium or anyone reaches out to us and this comes up, right? Oh, uh, the few people do raise the point. Hey, you're removing. It seems like a fundamental thing. Yeah. Physics, chemistry, math. Even by the way, we have math. We just remove the. We keep discrete math, everything mm-hmm. that's computer science related. Mm-hmm. But say, you know, difference, integrals, calculus, those are the kinds of things currently not in our course. The idea, again, theoretically, of having these in is to form that base. Now, okay, let's uh, talk of a typical as executed bachelor's program today. Mm-hmm. First year is your general breadth, your, your sciences, basic sciences, your basic widespread engineering, mechanical, civil, welding. Uh, lathe operating, uh, all of the electrical. And then year two, three, four, it becomes narrower, where, okay, it's more core subjects, whatever. If you pick mechanical, all the subjects related to that. If it's computer science, all of the subjects related to that. Mm-hmm. But the trouble with that is if you actually look at the curriculum, I think there's 75 to 80 percent intersection with what they've learned in second higher, uh, say 10, 11 and 12. So it's not serving a purpose of extending knowledge there. And it also, the way it's implemented, it's just pure, you know, mug up two days before the exam yeah. and answer. Yeah. You're not actually getting an outcome out of it. Domain knowledge is important. Widespread real world knowledge is important. In our program, uh, we designed the program to naturally get that starting year two. So one mm-hmm. core piece of our program is work integration, where the goal is starting third semester onwards, give every student the opportunity to integrate in the real world. Mm-hmm. Our position is that domain knowledge will come wherever the student lands. For example, one of the biggest forms students take in real world integration is internships. Hmm. We bring companies to come and take our student as interns. We've designed the program broadly so that before lunch, you're doing your academics. After lunch, you are you know, working in the real world. This is from second, third to fifth semester. Starting sixth semester, there's option to even switch over into go on site and do your academics from there but the idea is integrate into the real world because the true learning that happens now for example i did my i'm doing my oops course as part of the regular day today before lunch where where i'm working i'm actually working on the code base suddenly those uh, principles light up in my mind i'm just applying it in a very similar way now let's say a student of ours is placed in a a fintech in phone pay which is our uh, fintech company Automatically just being there and understanding whatever the project that they are working on, the student has to understand finance as a domain. They have to understand how, how the what is a mutual fund, right? What is this price difference? What's a candle view when it's shown in a yeah. and they cannot do it, no one is going to help them. They have to understand the domain and truly learn from it. And they're going to be doing this for six semesters, third to eighth. You know, most students who start from the third semester. So the amount of true real world domain knowledge will be first of all there for three years and it will also be very dispersed per the student's interest. The student who cares more about say uh, working in a non-profit will go understand that domain really deep. The, the student who went into the fintech domain will understand that really deep. So real world domain knowledge is there and in a true actual knowledge form. So why do companies sign up? Because you, what you said is that from first year onwards, you put the students on internships. And uh, I have- Second year onwards. Second year onwards. So I have managed interns and it is quite a commitment of time and effort. So, you know, why would companies want to sign up for an internship program? 
Right. So for the company side, we call out three distinct advantages. One is uh, you are getting a well-rounded entry-level talent is what we say. Basically what you expect uh, in, a, in a typical system, a, a student who comes in at the end of after their fourth year, they'll have hopefully done some project and showcase skill in one area, the good students, right? or rather the students who have put some effort in. Soft skills may be hit or miss, it will be dependent on that, that's what you get. Because of the way we've designed the program with a special focus on uh, the liberal arts as well, what we're saying is that same level of skill we've been able to achieve by the end of our first year. Hmm. Uh, no, how we do it, I can go in depth, but we actually, this was a the dream when we started it, now it's outcomes, we have the outcomes to prove. So the student has great soft skills, or above threshold for what is a workplace, because we run our classroom actually as a workplace, or a, a real world uh, hmm. organization. The second is they have the skills. So our pitch is, you're getting entry level talent, who will be net positive for you. The effort that will go from you in their mentorship, will be far uh, uh, paid up by what they'll be able to bring as a benefit to your organization and team. So there'll be a net positive addi addition to your team. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Second is uh, obviously uh, it's a win-win on both sides. For the student, they are learning, truly learning in the real world. For the companies, a stipend is significantly better in return on investment than of, say a full-time salary. Mm -hmm. Our students put in 30 hours uh, whenever Every they are. 30 hours a week mm. compared to a regular workplace which is 40 hours so mm. almost that amount of time and uh, we have developed in them those those critical thinking skills that not they can Narayan Murthy 70 hours I, <laughs> I couldn't resist that day <laughs> right uh, I thought I read that too uh, uh, so our, uh, we uh, our students for example we want them to put in eight hours a day mm. uh, that's how our program is designed so, so the, the, the third thing to the companies, you now because of those two things, the third thing is today companies are like you very rightly called out, right? Because students come fairly unprepared at the end of their fourth year, they have internal training programs. Yeah. Large companies, especially a lot of the older you know, TCS and so both have the entire uh, uh, charter. Massive internal. facilities for exactly. training. Six months of training, yeah. nine months of training. Yeah. It should really be the education side's job to mm -hmm. set things up and not uh, have it out there. So what we're saying is we're bringing that lift here. We're doing managed internships. Mm -hmm. So you come to a single place. Now, this year we have expanded to roughly uh, 12 university locations and yeah. signed up with a lot more. And we're saying that this can be a one-stop place for you to come find talent that will succeed in your organization. You don't need to do the unnecessary leg. Like, you, you solve the problem that your organization is solving for the real world. Why should you be worrying about, hey, where will I get talent? We're building yeah, of Also, this. the thing is that, you know, if you look at the larger organizations, they can invest in, you know, creating the facilities, training. Yeah. I mean, Infosys has a legendary training center in Mysore. Okay. I think TCS has a huge training center in Trivandrum. They can invest in it, but the small and medium enterprises can't make that level of investments in training up uh, youngsters. Correct. Yeah. And uh, I think my personal view there is, I think even these larger organizations that you called about, it was a necessity. Yeah. But if such a today's organization that are going to be the future large organizations, they have no necessity because it's really the system has to have improved in the mm. past 20 years, but it hasn't or rather yeah. not to the extent that the industry expects. Uh, so broadly what we're telling them is come uh, start off with us so that by the time our students graduate, they have three years of work experience. Yeah. So our freshers have three years of work experience and uh, I mean this will be a steady pool of people mm. who you anyway can integrate longer term into your organization. So mm. again win-win on all sides. This is what uh, you know they've been finding very compelling in mm. how we have managed internships. So we are, we are solving first time problems like in now an educational institution yeah. is taking the onus of the performance of students. Hmm. I mean, no intern typically comes with that kind of uh, in any company, right? Okay, I can go talk to the college about why something is working out well or not working out. So those are the problems you're solving. But from a organization perspective, oh wow, okay, everything is set up so well. Then these are my future employees. I get to work with them for a year. So uh, who are the organizations that you work with? And you also, what I also found very interesting is that 
you work with these academic institutions and they seem to have given you carte blanche to you know just take over their computer science program and that's fairly astonishing uh, kind of a system to follow so why is it that these institutions trust you to you know completely take over the computer science program and so yeah. both on the <coughs> academic side on the educational institution side and the uh, corporate side what are the organizations that you work with correct so let me take the uh, the academic side first uh, there i guess that that overnight success of uh, you know them trusting us has come from past few, you know 15 years of investment that my mm. co-founders uh, in their previous their uh, third time uh, entrepreneurs previous uh, venture was a venture called the face prep which was uh, into placement training and the claim to fame of that was for the uh, so called mass employers who taken a lot of students from the academy mm. into the industry they built an entire playbook and a system and a process to take a like a two week intervention roughly before the placement season and skill up students significantly mm. and the outcomes of that have been visible to the to our university partners in that case though you know more than a thousand institutes they have seen that okay these folks know how to get the outcome for us yeah that that trust built is where we are now uh, able to go and say that, hey you are capitalizing on that correct mm, okay uh, so i mean it, a lot of hard work and then is where this conversion comes in and now we have we have been able to prove that here too in our mm. pilot year we achieved 84% integration into real world from okay. third semester so we have actually and we did task anything special on the company side no one thing when we started calvium when we went and pitched to all of these uh, companies Uh, this includes pretty much who is who of the indian tech ecosystem even larger uh, we have you know, some investors from google microsoft and so forth but the the moment we pitched for half an hour is like this makes absolute sense obviously we want this so partly we just go back to them and say hey our students are now ready open up internships try them out and it is surprising i look at the weekly submissions us our, our students have to make a report about what they've done in the week so that academically we can grade them on the mm. courses and i look at the guy like llm is a big theme right now and right our students are working in the real world designing stuff that's going out to end users i mm. feel so proud saying that so we went and so we our first year of uh, real world integration we went to startups right the uh, pretty much web to web based uh, startups significant amount of them and some larger companies 3 4 gccs as they are called in india mm-hmm. these are typically mncs us based companies or even japan based actually that we have set up they have set up india offices so our students have landed in these uh, organizations mm-hmm. we have had uh, us based two organizations one uk based startup that's also come they are very happy so we are figuring out time zone challenges with our students mm-hmm. or like hey, i have to put in two hours meeting here you know how what, what do i do because i cannot put in so much time in the day and then yeah. two hours meeting at the end so we have to figure out and navigate those kinds of stuff uh, mm-hmm. so with some flexibility uh, so those so some name brand organizations from a startup or mid uh, range so we have some you know phone pay as a unicorn yeah. and so forth. we have tata one ngos come of the larger mncs we have uh, clary we have raxul uh, we had loves also participate last time and then some startups uh, you may not have heard of but there was one iot startup out of the us called mm. aero we have a company from uh, uk called uh, sleepy uh, so i mean a diverse range and we, our goal was we had company saying can i take more mm. and we gave them a range you get 2 to 4 students mm. of ours because we wanted to ensure that we are sending students out diversely and we want to scale this up as uh, you know opportunities are available for students where hey, i am interested in cyber security yeah. i will only look at those opportunities and sign up for them truly bringing that domain knowledge part in so you know i think what is interesting about what you are doing is you are solving problems on both sides you know both the industry side as well as the student side and probably also the academic side because you know the everybody agrees that the curriculum is a problem but nobody really has a solution so but where does fos fit into all of this yeah so see fos uh, i was thinking about this i knew this will come <laughs> so i think we fos fits in so beautifully both pragmatically and ideologically now what are we trying to do we are trying to set up 
amazing you know uh, computer scientists and computer engineers in the real world mm. how can we set them up for that so the some of the basics the fundamentals how do you build software how do you think about end users uh, how do you, uh, what are the best practices when coding and when when working in a team where is this found in the real world where is the solution for these things found in the real world i think all of the practices today even proprietary companies follow mm. have come from fast right from source control where famously git is the, yeah. the source control right now started under with linux as the first user and pretty much spread there and no matter what companies were on on some you know single non branchable base cvs and things like that or just copy pasting new folders everyone has moved to this yeah the later practices was you know 12 factor as they are called ci cd everything started and or were popularized fully in fast and then went into the real world yeah where real world skills is the specific innovation in a specific domain those end up remaining proprietary yeah. that's the only difference but the entire rest of the software engineering journey learning the every single programming language today that's mm-hmm. widely used as open source free. rust etc etc yeah there is no proprietary uh, i am confident in saying under 1% of software we use today uses proprietary uh, programming language yeah so that whole stack of software engineering is so it it, uh, it is the right thing to choose when you are building a computer science course okay, let's copy and paste all of those things into the education system because mm-hmm. they will set a student up for success when they land there yeah and the second part is uh, the idealism so i am a huge uh, uh, you know fast enthusiast i presented in right from that you know that instance i gave where i went and presented in conferences it was fast solaris i have yeah. not heard that word in many years you know so yeah so right from there and then uh, for a while i created this uh, multi platform uh, Open, very popular open source project i will say that over time i mean it has not been worked in for 10 years and it's still being used widely and i still get emails either thanking saying thank you for building this or i have this request can you fix it and my answer so far up until past two weeks ago was hey it's kind of done i don't have the time to work on it mm. but turns out there was a fork of it created two three years ago it was written in python 2 that and someone created a python 3 version and has mm. started maintaining it mm. i reached out to them two weeks ago say hey, do you want to just join in as maintainers and take over they agreed and two new people have joined the project less two <coughs> weeks ago mm. so i am proud to say trailv is now an actively maintained project again mm. so that i know those things got me the role at hacker x they were a, a key part of my resume and it yeah so it's provided a uh, ideological and pragmatic path of i never had anyone ask me what my marks were or what degree i had yeah. there was one maybe one line item in excel of my first job yeah. so so with that kind of a uh, my personal backing of mm. how i see fast fitting it or the processes of how to learn fast is the best way of learning software engineering for the real world you so know you, i want to jump in there because i think it's also becoming a way of hiring now you know for example i mean typical process for a company to hire has been to look at you know what are the top tier campuses and then kind of go down the ladder and say okay you know these are the institutes or the universities that i will hire from but uh, off late a uh, interesting trend that i have been seeing is that uh, for example one of my friends volunteers with the pimpri chinchwad college of engineering and uh, two of his students were hired by one of the ride hailing platforms for a salary of 60 lakhs per annum each and that was because they had contributed to some of the apache projects that the ride hailing platforms were working on so they got you know somebody who's like immediately employable uh, somebody who can hit the ground running from day one uh similarly i heard that uh, facebook had hired somebody from jadavpur university at a package of 1 crore plus because again you know the, the, that student person was working on a apache project which facebook was using so i think it's a very interesting time where not just the academic credentials but also the contributions that somebody has made as kind of is kind of being part of the hiring process so i'll, I'll go farther than that the 
academics are only used when this is not available mm. in fact you know all the things you said is how we have systematically done it in kalvium the, the placement process of kalvium is we showcase the work of students on github to mm. any hiring uh, partners that come we do not share the cgpa we do not share you know specific marks and things like that yeah we say uh, so what you have called out was anecdotes yeah. right these are incidents that have happened yeah and they largely are reliant on some specific student strength or out of their own interest they went and did you know contributed to a project they reached out perhaps to these companies and said hey look at my work i think you will find me a good fit what we are trying to do is make a system out of it mm-hmm. this should be the natural way and we ran it all of our placement processes have been that way so we create one a profile of the student we call it to hiring partner companies we call it uh, longitudinal data mm-hmm. today the name brand of a university the cgpa the ranking are used as proxies for the probability yeah. of someone succeeding as a software engineer yeah. because there is nothing else right what else can i ask for you? you have a cgpa i don't even know so the first thing most hiring managers do in when looking at say 10 resumes is hey is there a github profile link okay i'll go click on it oh, okay there's some activity here is it actual good stuff if it's a zero thing oh, okay no information here right yeah it's a very common practices uh, practice another big thing has now recently become now it's so a game that is meaningless but for a while people would go look at the you know hacker rank the lead code and these platforms where okay have you showcased some coding skills again partly using it as a proxy of how successful you will be in the real world mm-hmm. our position is we want to have all of that itself directly available when you can see a whole project so last year the average number of commits our students had so every student of kalvium in second semester works on an open source one or more open source projects mm-hmm. uh and they have to f- do it using the standard industry practices like using git we use github we have a community every project has to be fully open it, ha- it has to go through the uh, code review cycle you create a pull request get it approved get it merged every student does this Mm-hmm. so on average i think our median number of commits in a project was around 20 our highest was 114 because student over course of 3 months worked on a project with that many iterations mm-hmm. now when our company partners come i just say hey here's the link to the project this student worked on they go into the pull request they look at the way the code is well, obviously the expectations are you know you know how well it is written and so forth you have to temper it to the fact that these are students in the first year of their engineering but they are head and shoulders about uh, the traditional process which have any such profile will be created by one in- interested student out of a pool of 40 or 60 who does the effort mm-hmm. so we are trying to make it a systematic thing how can the education process itself impart all of this knowledge to you so that i do not no company asks us for the grades mm-hmm. hey look at the pull request look at the actual code the student has written that yeah. you don't need a proxy for how good of an engineer they're going to be you can actually see it hmm. so one of the uh, i find this interesting because one of our uh, goals at fos united is to see how we can increase the contribution of code from india uh, many years ago almost 20 years ago i was talking to a very eminent academic and asked him what do you think of the fos community in india i heard like one sentence which was like you know i mean it just it still hits me when i think of it because he said we are a nation of downloaders and uh, of course today we are the third largest community on github uh, but i think the contribution of new projects coming out of india is very very low so th- i think this is interesting that you know you're getting in students to contribute back to the global open source community but what is the reaction of the maintainers when you know these students reach out to them uh, how do you kind of um, get the students to convince the maintainers to accept the pull request uh we are going through that journey our first year was the pilot year we had roughly 42 students at that time the goal was to create original projects first so mm-hmm. we, how many of those are actively being used today i'd probably say one of them i see or otherwise it's zero mm-hmm. so these were projects to showcase the skill of students but we did not yet i will say in our first year crack the problem of contributing back to existing projects mm-hmm. this year one of the goals we have taken up is that now 
uh, we have to fit in two realities. One is we need a skill showcase of students, yeah. true skill showcase, so that you know grades actually isn't something anyone we want us to ask for. Apart from skill showcase, how do you build those uh, larger software development skills, which is collaborating with people? Mm. Uh, some of the steps we've taken there. We worked with uh, organizations uh, like some so in the social sector, you know, tech for good. Uh, was I believe the name of one of the organizations and they these are organizations that utilize open source mm -hmm. to solve problems of say a non-profit organization so one step we did was working with them and uh, called them in as hiring partners and said hey take our students as interns mm -hmm. they are reasonably proficient in the open source process and some of these projects and then you can utilize them to contribute and set up open source for now and as part of that, if there is some deficiency, they can go contribute for that deficiency. Mm -hmm. That was one step. Second was, uh, we have been reaching out to projects. I am very glad you called out Hopscotch, probably I should reach out to them as well. But we are reaching out to uh, India-based, no, just from a time zone perspective, we are actually mm -hmm. global otherwise. But from a time zone and collaboration perspective, so we are reaching out to projects that have maintainers in India and saying, if you want smart students, where you get a win-win, where you get more contributors and some more mind space on your project. And in exchange, what the student gets is real-world mentorship. Then we can find that win-win path. Mm. So for example, right now I'm working with a pool of eight to nine students who have expressed interest in uh, contributing to GSOC, mm. famous Google Summer of Code. So this has been a very long-running project um, which seeks to, which funds students yeah. to work on open source projects. So now these students said, uh, okay, come February, February is when this the applicants for that start. What can we start doing now to prepare for that? Again, these are like, you know, first semester students mm -hmm. in engineering. And I, 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 I again wouldn't say it's solved, but what we're trying to figure out is, hey, what are those steps we learn by doing it? So I'm, we're figuring out some ways of integrating, but so far no one killer success yet. This year is the time to find those few killer successes. So, uh, how many cycles have you gone through and what has been the result so far in terms of placement, etc.? Yeah, so we are in the second year of our operations. Mm. Uh, the nice thing is, in our case, we don't need to wait all the four years to get to speak about our outcomes. It comes at the end of first yeah. year itself. So, we have had one, uh, our pilot batch of students where we uh, integrated with one university partner and one direct our program run by us itself. Overall, the, the pilot pool of students was 42 and uh, as part of uh, the placement process so far, we've had 37 sign up and accept offers in organizations and join. So even though these students have not graduated, they have offers? Correct. These, so, I mean, when I say offer, these are uh, uh, internship offers for 12 months, typically. Okay. Okay. So we do our typical, we, we sometimes deviate, but our typical contract for students that we work out with our industry partners is 12 months which they love because a typical otherwise internship yeah. is two months yeah. which barely a student has ramped up and they have to go yeah. and uh, other things like I have an exam to write and this and yeah. those kind of stuff. So you kind of you know remove all of those and say hey a student of ours will work with you for 12 months mm -hmm. that's a long time to get to know them and if you both like each other you can renew for 12 more and 12 more mm -hmm. and then they perhaps join you that's the happy and, path. And the organizations hiring them as interns also offer a stipend etc correct yeah these are what we, do the stipends range from yeah we only accept uh, paid internships we don't we don't do others just from a perspective of we want to make sure these are folks who are coming in seriously right? mm. and uh, so we have a minimum uh, uh, stipend for students at 15000 rupees a month mm. our highest offer last time i believe was 45000 a month these mm. are second semester students and uh, yeah, they continue and it continues to ramp up. Yeah. Our median was, a, our average and median both were around 27, 28,000. Mm. Uh, I, I think in some sense, one thing we realized was uh, that was getting too optimized for by our students. In that, hey, which I should be applying for because the companies were on a range, hey, maybe I will go for that. But our, our key, our key uh, reason for this is the education. We are, we are not here to, 
So you want out. the students to optimize for, for learning, learning, not for the top exactly. highest pay package. Mm. Exactly. Okay. So because uh, one learning is in the long term, right? That whatever plus minus you make in the early years are meaningless mm. compared to if you are on a good path yeah. in terms of your learning, right? You will naturally land yeah. those good financial outcomes for yourself. But financial outcome is one thing. There's also you know, just life satisfaction, working on really good problems that you enjoy. Those yeah. are also things you optimize for. So we counsel students on that. Mm. And we are also on this side trying to see if we can standardize it and not you know, have to worry about the deviation too much. So these are the learnings that have come from this. So I think for students who are listening to this podcast, there are you know, two big takeaways. One is that in the early stages of your career, optimize for learning. And the other is that you know, be part of the open source community. That because there's a famous saying in the FOSS community that code talks, bullshit walks. Uh, so I think this is you know, truly something that's a very interesting project that you've been up to. Where do you see Calvium go from here over the next few years? What is, what is the ambition of you and your co-founders? So this year, uh, after our pilot year, this year we've expanded to, we signed up with 20 universities. We have gone live with around 12 at the moment. Uh, one thing we are seeing is uh, just after that success of the pilot and just, you know, suddenly there is a lot of interest from all corners, you know, the universities, the students and the companies. Uh, because some of the things like, this, this developed this whole uh, tier system, this tier 1 colleges, tier 2 colleges yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Right? We've designed a system where there's no tiers. Like no, now it's more location preferences, what our second year was. We want to have enough places around the country. Mm. So student can join any place. Typically, you know, parents and students want to stay somewhere close to where they are. Is one thing we have seen. So our, this year's goal was okay. Can we go wider and have options all across the country? In fact, some negotiations and sign-ups with you know Middle East and things like that. The coming year, the goal will be to go deeper in each of these places. Our, I think our uh, our collective long-term vision is to get this outcomes to a significant higher number. Like I said, right, the 25,000 yeah. out of the 8 lakh, like if it can become 50 or 75, we just 2x or 3x that. That is a massive lift. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal. Can we go ha achieve this kind of a systematic change for computer science aspirants mm -hmm. and get them the real world outcomes that they deserve? Yeah, I mean, you know, just to summarize, I think we find Calvium to be a very interesting company because you're solving problems for three different aspects of society you know the both the companies are actually not both but uh, the companies the students as well as the academic institution uh, while also contributing to the first community i think it's a very very interesting experiment and uh, we wish calvium all success and uh, you know wish you all the best thank you yeah. so much for joining us thank you so much it's amazing to be here